What's going to happen in episode two of The Amazing Digital Circus? When is it coming out? Is Pomni going to die? And is it actually possible that these characters could be working for Playtime Co? Here's every secret we know so far about episode two. So all of this new news about episode two started to happen on wackywatch.com when they updated their original video from the one with Jack Black to a picture of Pomni sleeping. But now she's awake. I literally remember watching her sleep before. Well, that uh -huh. sounded real creepy, but we've looked at wackywatch.com together before and she was sleeping. And now look at her, oh, she's blinking. That's a good sign, right? In our last video, we talked about how the wrinkles in the bed could indicate the release date, and we got that wrong. But we may have actually predicted something in their latest announcement. Two wrinkles, three wrinkles. So it wasn't two thirds, it was 223. So, you know, uh, we call it, kinda. But Pomni was not the only one to wake up. Glitch Studios just posted a brand new video full of secrets about the rest of the series. Let's watch. Okay. <gasps> I'm nervous. I love this music. It's kind of a bop, right? Ah, hey, My Pony. goodness gracious. No. What? You're right. A pilot to the amazing digital circus yes. reached our goal of one view. Honey, I think you got more than one. And upgraded to episode one of Woo! the amazing digital circus. That was just the pilot. Series. Is that how that normally works? Shut up! I have so much to show you! <gasps> oh, shut up, rude! Your little crying face left quite Aww. a little crying mark on the internet. Something I don't canonically have any knowledge of! Wait, did he just talk about not knowing anything about the internet? Isn't it kind of weird that Kane also broke the fourth wall? If you haven't heard that term before, let me tell you about it. So, you know, normally when you're watching TV with your buddies, it does not seem like the actors know you exist. You know, like you're just watching watching them do their thing. But breaking the fourth wall basically means you're directly referring to the audience. So basically Kane just talked to us. Like the wall was gone. He broke through and he said, hey, Bree, I don't know nothing about the internet. But what else do we got? Well, it looks like there may be some new locations. Like this cool candy it's kingdom. Beautiful. And Kingo with a shotgun. Oh. And let's not forget about minimum wage labor. Working hard or hardly some... working. Wait, 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 wait. This isn't finished yet. Don't look. Oh, okay, I won't look. Kind of looks like a football field to me for some reason. So it looks like we have three new locations potentially. A McDonald's knockoff, Candyland, and a spooky house. No clue if they'll appear in episode two or maybe later on in the series. More importantly, where are they? We know from episode one that the only things that exist are the circus grounds and the, the void. void. We've said before that Amazing Digital Circus is likely a video game from the 90s. Are these new places different levels? That would be so cool. It's like Candyland's a game. You could be, you know, doing some sort of food simulation at McDonald's. McDoodles, I guess if it's a knockoff. I don't know. What else do we got? Hi, Kane. I'm gonna kill you. Oh, she is unhappy. What? Why? read all the scripts and saw I don't get a single line of dialogue. Uh -oh. The moon gets two. Well, that's not very nice, Kane. The sun and the moon should be treated equally. I remember the moon talking in the pilot, but did it have two lines? This is the only time that the moon talks in episode one. Hello, Kane. I love you. <laughs> get out of here before the moon gets frisky. It's a sultry voice, right? Like the moon has a thing for Kane. Like we all know it. Like the moon is out to get him. So maybe that's why Kane favors the moon over the sun. That's, that's all I'm trying to say. She'd be flirting with him. That was just one line though, not two. What else will the moon have to say then, huh? Maybe it's gonna profess its love for Kane again. I mean, I would like to see it all, I'll hype her up. Or is the moon actually going to tell us something important? Either way, I think it's pretty funny that the moon is in love with Kane and the sun hates him. Okay, next we have new characters, which I am very excited about. Speaking of dialogue, there will be all sorts of new Yay! dialogue from many of our new colorful characters. I love it. Oh, oh my goodness. Many that was so many. Well, that was a ton of characters we saw in a brief two seconds. <sighs> Let's slow it down a bit. It looks like there are eight new characters in total. We have a cowboy gummy alligator, something I never thought I would say. Like, what even is that? A blue boy, a mixtape, which I used to make when I was younger. A fudge monster, which really makes me want to eat some chocolate. <laughs> a Casper knockoff. A candy princess, kind of like Peach. 
ghost lady, and a blue mannequin. There's a lot of blue going on, which is one of my favorite colors, so I'm okay with it. But can we also talk about none of these characters were characters we saw in episode one on the doors. Are they like roomless? They weren't given a room in the circus tent. I've got a lot of thoughts on these guys and how they could fit into the story, but let's get through the rest of the announcement first. With this many new characters, imagine all the violent shipping wars that we'll oh. be completely powerless to do anything Not about! what I expected to hear. Is... is this a cry for help? <laughs> oh no! I see. I blocked out for a second. What he turned happened? into a plushie. Uh, you... <laughs> How can we support the production Bubble. of this cool new show? Great question, Pomni. A cry All for help. Our sales go right back into funding the show and oh, allow nice. us to do bigger and crazier things. Who knew Why his eyeballs could move I like that? I'm a pen if it meant getting sold to fund more wacky events. Like this bubble pin. Bubble! And this Pomni pin. Those are really cute, I'm not gonna forget lie. About this. Uh, Me, plushie. Also available is this I cool love one shirt. Of those. And I'm not gonna lie, this is kinda cool. So after this announcement, this vinyl record was one of the first things they posted about on Twitter, including some really interesting artwork. And now please forgive me, I don't call Twitter X. I, I can't get down with that. All right, so Glitch Studio says the DC Pilot soundtrack in vinyl form. Have an existential, that's a hard word to say, existential, existential, existential crisis in sweet analog sound as Pomni spins around and around and around and around and around. That's super fun. I kind of want to listen to this record. Why didn't I buy it before this video? I'm getting distracted. Let's look at this artwork. Is that Kane's hand right there? And if so, does that confirm the fact we thought he could be the creator of the digital circus? And behind this sky curtain is space, which does not look like the void that we saw before. Does this vinyl record actually tell us anything we need to know about the amazing digital circus lore? Let me know what you think in the comments. It also could just be some cool looking artwork. So that's everything in the announcement, but let's talk about what we saw, starting with <laughs> those new characters. First, we have the gummy alligator. I'm gonna name him see you later alligator. I don't know, but it's not super original, but that's see you later right there. He's obviously some sort of gummy alligator man, which I really wanna, oh. hold up. <laughs> Transparently, I have gummy worms next to me, and now I really want one of them. And he also wears a cowboy hat. It's always pretty cool. It's pretty clear that the later is from the Candy Kingdom. Also, it seems like this is one of Gooseworks' favorite characters. Like, let's see what she tweeted as soon as the announcement went out. She tweeted, my boy. So she likes him, apparently. Next, we have Blue Boy, whose actual name is Orbs Man. But you already knew that, right? That's okay. <laughs> no one knew until a few days ago when Glitch Studios posted this on Twitter following their big announcement. Da 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 da! This is Orb Man! Orbs Man! But you already knew that. He's everyone's favorite character. Literally, Glitch, I didn't, but thank you so much for confirming that I don't know everything. It's interesting that not only do they call him everyone's favorite, but he's also shown in this scene, Spudsies. The same place of work that we saw Jax being pushed into earlier, like the knockoff McDonald's. Maybe he's the mascot for the strange digital McDonald's? I don't know. I mean, he's kind of like Grumpus, I guess. I mean, there's definitely something a little bit off about Orbs Man, probably because he's unable to smile at us, but there's something even more off about the next character, the tape recorder. I really don't know if this is an actual new character character or if Glitch Studios is just pranking us. But now that you mention it, there are also already characters in the amazing digital circus that are lifeless objects, like Kinger's a chess piece, Gangle is made out of ribbon and a mask, and Ragatha is literally a doll. So it is possible that this is a new living character. And since it's a tape player, we gotta play it and hear what it's gotta say. Do you think it talks in audio clips like Bumblebee in Transformers? So you, you talk to the radio? I do, you do. Maybe. It also looks like it's in the same spooky house as the ghost lady and the adorable tiny cutesy ghost. So there's a good chance that these tapes are extra spooky. What is it with games and leaving scary tapes everywhere? You got Amanda the Adventurer, we got Poppy Playtime. I mean, come on. Head to BreeMerch.com right now for the Busy Bee Bundle. Go get you one. Next, we have the Fudge Monster, which I don't have fudge near me or I would eat it. I know what you're thinking. This is obviously an alligator made out of chocolate. But Glitch Studios actually tweeted something that might surprise you. This is Fudge Monster. He's made out of fudge. And candy corn and gumballs are something too. Let's not miss those 
details as well. Yeah, so that actually wasn't that surprising. I'm a little embarrassed right now. I mean, if he's a fudge monster, he's made out of fudge. Yeah. But outside of looking like some chocolate somebody left in the sun, there's also another character that he looks quite a lot like. The Goink Queen. Like, let's do a side by side. They're basically twins. Look at that face. Uh, uh, Gloink Queen. She's not made out of fudge, but they look the same, kinda. It's also weird that two of the Candy Canyon creatures look similar to characters in the Digital Circus already, but we'll talk more about that later. For now, we must talk about Ghost Boy. He's so cute, he's like a little Casper knockoff and he like looks like he wants to give you a hug with like little penguin arms and so cute. And it reminds me of Luigi's Mansion when you know you get the vacuum and you go and you get all the ghosts. I played that game a few times. And the setting looking like Luigi's Mansion may be more intentional than you would think because Glitch Studios owns this channel here, SMG4, which look at all this Mario content. They're making tons of fun animations, mainly featuring characters from the Mario universe, which also may explain a little bit about how the next character looks. We have Candy Peach Princess. She is so cute. She is everything. She is by far my new favorite new character. She almost looks like a cross between Princess Peach from Mario and Princess Bubblegum. And like Princess Bubblegum, she's more than likely the ruler of the kingdom. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, that's kind of a fun combo. Like lots of pink, you're a princess. Also, she kind of looks like Kinger. I will, I will mention that. Or Ragatha. I think it's the way their eyes are. She has like a similar body shape and height it looks like to Ragatha. Maybe they're sisters. Or what if she's Ragatha's replacement? I mean, we've talked about how Pomni could be a replacement for Kofmo because, you know, he abstracted. What if Ragatha abstracts and they need to replace her? Maybe that's the reason they go to the Candy Canyon in the first place. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I would just go to Candy Canyon because it's pretty and I like candy. But, you know, this isn't about me. This is all about what Kane wants to do. She also seems to be one of the three characters they teased before their big announcement in this tweet from Gooseworks. Look, she's here, look at her pink dress. And then obviously we got our boy Orbs man over here, but we have another character we must address. The ghost lady. This lady is very interesting. She obviously looks like she's in the same setting as the tape recorder and the cute little ghost. And she also looks like a Luigi's Mansion character. And she's also one of the most human looking characters that we've seen so far, other than Pomni. And it's weird that both the ghost lady and Pomni have no nose. And no one knows why. <laughs> Is it possible that these ghosts are actually the souls of the people trapped in the circus? Could this be the real Pomni? Like that's her soul floating around, they don't got a nose? I don't know. And then we have our last new character they've revealed. The blue mannequin. He's very stressed, apparently. In fact, he's the only characters moving in the announcement trailer. Now, this isn't the first mannequin we've seen in the Amazing Digital Circus. Remember, they were all over the place in the first episode, but none of them were blue. Why is it blue? Why is it screaming? We've never seen one this panicked before other than the one Pomni, you know, walked in on in the bathroom, which that would scare anyone. In our previous videos, we've talked about how we think these mannequins could actually just be placeholders or character slots for people who have yet to join the circus. Evidently, the Candy Canyon has a need for those character slots too, which makes you wonder. Are these new locations different games or something more? There are a few details about each of these places that pretty much confirm that these are all a part of different mini games that Kane's gonna send his crew on. So let's take a closer look at each spot, starting with the Candy Canyon. So the first thing that helped me confirm that these new locations aren't just reskins of the Amazing Digital Circus is the fact that we indeed see Pomni, Jax, and Kinger in this adorable little wagon that we have here. It's obviously a play on Candyland. And judging by the fact that we saw three other characters previewed in this location means that it's probably pretty important. In fact, it may be the location we visit in episode two. Just like Adventure Time, this is a candy kingdom. So we can probably expect more medieval fantasy candy crossovers here. The fact that they presented it by itself means that it's probably the most finished, which is why I believe it may be the next place that we go. 
outside of the Candy Kingdom, we also have Spudsies, which is obviously a McDonald's ripoff. When Kane first made his joke about minimum wage labor, I'm pretty sure and I hope that was just a joke. <laughs> but after seeing its logo in the background of Orbsman's picture, it is definitely more than that. It's clearly a McDonald's parody. But why Jax is working there is a complete and total mystery. And I'm pretty sure that it's going to be a bit longer before we see this one. I'm predicting, you know, episode three or four. Because unlike Candy Kingdom, Jax is the only one that we can actually confirm makes it here. Other than Orbsman too, I assume. Did the others abstract before him? I mean, it does feel a lot less colorful and cheery than both the Candy Kingdom and the Digital Circus. But it's not as odd as the other location revealed, the Haunted Mansion. So it's pretty clear to me that this is a Casper knockoff. The Ghost Lady, the tape recorder, they all come from the same green antique house. The house and the characters all have a big Luigi's Mansion vibe and honestly, that might be exactly what they were going for. I also am pretty sure that whenever they visit this place, Kinger is going to lose it. He looks pretty scary at this location in the trailer. Is it possible that the ghost characters we've seen are the ghosts of the main cast? Let me know in the comments. There's also an unfinished stadium that they showed us, but there's really not enough for us to go off of there. Maybe the last episode will be sports themed. With all of the new characters and locations, it's going to be pretty hard to predict what's going to happen in episode two, but I'm gonna give it a try. In our last video, we talked about a few things that could happen in episode two, mainly that a character will likely abstract, and there are more than a few likely candidates. I mean, Ragatha nearly abstracted in the last episode. Gangle seems to be on the verge of a breakdown, but the one person I am most certain will abstract next is Kinger. And the fact that we literally saw him trying to kill Pomni with a blaster in this announcement, helps my case. And you heard me right, that is indeed Pomni that he is hitting with a blaster in the latest announcement. If you're able to crank up the brightness on that tiny little clip in the announcement video, you're able to see a faint outline of who he is hitting a jester hat and all. Now, whether or not that's gonna happen in episode two has yet to be seen, but the fact that Kinger is in the shot in the Candy Kingdom with Jax and Pomni makes me think that Kinger's breakdown may actually be a little ways off, especially if that's Kinger's hand pushing Jax into Spudsies. Ragatha, on the other hand, is nowhere to be found. So it's actually more than likely that she's the next one to go. But what would be really cool in episode two is to actually get more information about where these people came from. But until we get that information, I have a wild guess. Is the amazing digital circus cast actually old employees from Poppy Playtime Co? I know I sound crazy, but hear me out. So you may not know this, but this is the guy who voices Jax right here. He is also the voice of Richie in Poppy Playtime. Like, look, right here. Now, at first I thought this was just a fun fact. I mean, voice actors voice multiple characters all the time. But then I thought about how similar those two characters actually are. For those of you who don't know, Richie was an employee of Playtime Co. who always complained about his job and had a really bad attitude. Sound familiar with Jax? We also know from several of the tapes that we found that he was kind of a bully to the kids in the play care. It is also important to note in Poppy's Playtime, when adults have their consciousness transferred into a toy, you completely forget everything about your past life, just like the characters in The Amazing Digital Circus. So I know I sound crazy, but what if the Digital Circus is where the minds of the adults go when they are transferred into toys at Playtime Co? What if the Digital Circus was actually a place for them to escape the horrors that go on there. Could Pomni be Poppy? Mommy Longlegs, Kissy Missy? I know it's a lot to think about, but it's possible. That's all the secrets we've found so far, but put it in the comments if you have a secret that we missed.